Lips Inc. was started in 1979 by Steven Greenberg, who wanted to name the band Lip Sync. But because another band was using that name at the time, he instead named it Lips Inc., which is a homophone or pun on the name Lip Sync. I have a feeling that the band's debut album, which featured Funky Town, was named Mouth to Mouth to keep with the apparent theme. Welcome to Behind the Bass, where this week we're looking at Funky Town by Lips Inc., a funky hit that reinvigorated the disco genre, selling over 8 million copies worldwide. In 1980, Funky Town was the second song to make it as a single from the album, reaching number one in over 10 countries. The song is also featured at number 36 on VH1's list of one-hit wonders from the 1980s. Lips Inc. cracked the charts a few more times after this song was released, but with little success outside the U.S. dance charts. The popular music video for this song features Doris D., a blonde woman also known as Debbie Jenner, who lip syncs the song and is often seen as the face of the band, although the real singer is Cynthia Johnson. Cynthia Johnson's vocals feature the precursor to autotune in the verses, but remain unedited in the choruses. In 2004, the song was featured in the sequel to the hit movie Shrek, Shrek 2. In 2007, it appeared again in Alvin and the Chipmunks, which grossed over $210 million in the U.S. alone. The song has also made appearances in Friends, I am so drunk. Futurama, oh, and more. Too? I chose to cover this song because I've been noticing that people have enjoyed the synth and disco songs I've done lately. Funky Town has great energy, and whenever it comes on, I can't help but enjoy it. The reason I've been jamming to this song lately is because of the bass line. The bass is what gets people shaking their groove thing on the dance floor, and this song got it right. As is typical with a disco song, the bass mainly plays octaves on the root notes of the chords. Funky Town is in the key of C, and so it makes sense that we're mostly playing octaves on C. In the pre-chorus, the song changes chords from C to G, which is the fifth of C. When it jumps up an octave, the bass part walks down an octaves back to C. In the last pre-chorus, the song mixes it up by playing the walking pattern down an octave from earlier in the song. On a standard four-string bass, this moves out of the range of the instrument, which is why I played it the same way as the other pre-choruses. If you have a five-string bass octave effect or other pitch-shifting effect, you'd be able to hit it, no problem. I've also heard the song described as sterile and repetitive, but the call and response section with the saxophone helped to break up the monotony of the song with a completely different part that helped keep your ears focused and engaged. Another great aspect of the song is the funky chorus line. It's a simple riff that repeats every bar, but alternates the rhythm of the last beat, making it kind of a two-bar phrase. The line's eighth notes keep driving the song, and the walking line gives it a groove that's hard to shake. At just the right time, there's a syncopated start to the line to connect to the song and give forward motion and a sense of development as the song progresses. Luckily, the bass was easy to hear since I couldn't find any live videos of the band, eliminating all guesswork that I had when tabbing out the bass. Since this bass line sounds like a synth, I would have used my synth pedal, but I just couldn't find the right sound for it. The pedal has a lot of cool and useful effects, but it's not quite the synth sound I picture in my head when thinking of a synth bass, like in this song, You Spin Me Round, or Personal Jesus. I like the tone that I got with Red Red Wine, so I used those same settings for this song because they fit it very well. Removing any sort of harsh attack in your tone would give good results for the song, regardless of the kind of bass that you use. This might look like using your fingers instead of a pick, rolling off the mids and or highs in your EQ, or possibly turning down the tone knob if your bass has one. On screen, I have the settings for my compressor and my sans amp that I used for this song. You can pause the video if you want, 
but I've put the settings in the description like I do for all of my videos. If you think I forgot to mention something about this song, or if there's another one that you'd like me to do, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time.